This is a presentation of Chapter 6-2 in Season A1, which is about routing. And when we look at a router, we will see that this is something that we have in our local network if we need to communicate outside our network. Because if we have PC1 and PC2 here, they are connected to a switch on a local area network using Ethernet, well then they can only communicate with each other. So if you want them to be able to communicate outside their network, well then we need to have a router or a layer 3 device in here, which will take care of to send the information out to other networks. So we configure these two with a default gateway and the default gateway IP address is the one of the router. So when something is sent to one remote network, then it's automatically sent up to the router here and the router will look into its routing table and find out exactly where to send it. In the computers themselves, they actually also have a routing local routing table that will have the IP address of the, um, the gateway. Because what they normally can see is in their routing table is their directly connected networks, uh, the local network route and the local default route. And the default route is what will happen if I get if I want to send to something that I don't know. And what I don't know in networking terms is called 0000, zero, zero, zero four times zero. That means all other networks and all information to all other networks will go to my gateway, which is called 192.168.10.1. This here is the local routing table on PC1. We can see that on a Windows computer and I think also in other operating systems by using the command netstat-r. Then it will see the content of the routing table. So this one here will tell us that we have a default gateway and it will tell us that whenever I want to communicate with something outside my own network I will send it automatically to the default gateway. If I don't have a default gateway well then I will only see the local IP addresses down here and will not be able to communicate outside my own network. Same thing applies if we are using IP version 6 then if you look at it and uh, the routing table here, you will just see an IP version 6 address instead of an IP version 4 address. So the router uh, will look in its routing table. And in this case here, when we start this router, router number 1, it will in the beginning only know the three networks here that has a directly connecting interface to the router. Um, then the routers, depending on the routing protocol, will start communicating with each other. So then it will also get to know that there are some networks over here that I can also reach by sending the data on to router number two. So the routers will communicate with each other and then they will add information into the routing tables about other networks apart from those I'm directly connected to. So if you look at the routing table at um, in the router, we do it with a command called show IP route, and then we will see that they have uh, that we have a lot of entries here. We can see that for router number one, there are the networks that we are directly connected to. They have a C in front of them, meaning that these are directly connected networks. It's 192.168.10 and it's 192.168.11.0. These two networks here are directly connected and also the 209.165.200.224, which is this network over here. So these are the router's own directly connected networks. Then we can also see that there are two networks over here called 10.110, 10.120. And we can see that they have a D in front of them, which means that they have been learned by another routing protocol called EIGRP. And we can reach them by sending the information to 
with the interface here, which is called 209.165.200.226, which is the IP address over here. So by sending the data over to this IP address, well then router number two will be able to route the traffic on to these two networks. If you look first at the uh, directly connected routing table entries, we will see that the first here, it's either a C or an A. The C is the um, how the networks are learned. In this case here, it's either the directly connected network C or a local networks, which is the exact IP address of the interface. We will see that um, the destination network and how it's connected well, in this case, 192.168.10.0, and it is directly connected. And then in the end here, we will see which interface that it is using. We can see when it comes to um, a remote network routing table entry, something that has been learned by other uh, routers, you can see that there are a, lit a little bit more complex uh, entry here. First, again, how it's learned. In this case, it's by EIGRP, then the network itself, then something called the administrative distance, which tells us something about the trustworthiness of the route source. We can have different routing protocols, we can have static routes, and the smaller the number, the more trustworthy a route is. So it's somehow to choose between different types of routing protocols. Then we have the metric. The metric will tell us the distance to the network. Uh, we will always choose the one with the lowest network because that is closest to us. Um, then we have the next hop IP address, which is the IP address of the next router that we are directly connected to. In this case, 209.165.200.226, which is this interface over here. Then it tells us how long it has been in a routing table and also which outgoing interface that we send our, um, the data onto. And this is the local one. This is our own serial 000. So if I want to go to this interface, I send my data out of this uh, interface here, the serial interface. So the next hop address is important uh, so that we know where to send data to these two networks. And remember, it's always the neighboring routers interface IP address, not our own. We need to point to the neighbor's IP address to be able to send the data over to this router number two and Router number two will look into its routing table and find out that these two networks are directly connected. So that is why I can route the traffic to these two. What happens if something comes in where it looks into its routing table and cannot find the networking address? Well, then the packet will be dropped and will say, I don't know, the path to this network. Yeah, and that's it. I close down.